At the heart of any modern studio is the computer. The computer is not only used to replace tape as storage and the recording medium, but is also used for signal processing, mixing, and effects, as well as busing and routing. The use of computers in music production fundamentally changed the recording industry forever. Composers can now use notation software to write and instantaneously hear back their music in different instruments and voices. Editors can now cut and paste without actually having to cut and paste tape. While many purists may argue and strictly use analog studios, it is no secret that the ease of use and cost effectiveness and workflow capabilities in computers are leaps and bounds over tape recording. We'll first look into the components inside a computer, starting with the motherboard. The motherboard, also known as logic board, is what links communication between the other components. If the other components were exits on a road, then the motherboard would be the highway allowing cars to travel back and forth from destinations. The central processing unit, or CPU, is the component containing all of the processing information, allowing the computer to carry out commands or sequences. For example, when you click to open an application, that command is sent to the CPU and carries out the next necessary steps. Going back to the highway analogy, if you give a driver an address where you need to go, the driver in this scenario, acting as a CPU, will process the information and hopefully begin to drive in the right direction. What if the driver doesn't know the area well enough, or you gave him too many stops and forgets one? It will most likely take a long time to complete your errands, and in the computer world, your computer can crash. Especially recording or mixing, the computer is taking in and processing a lot of information, so the CPU is important along with the next component, RAM. RAM, or Random Access Memory, stores and retrieves computer data being used. It allows data to be read or written from a computer, whether the data is on disk, hard drive, or cloud. Think of RAM as a secret backroad shortcut when you are stuck in traffic. The more secret road, the faster you can get to and from the destination. The more RAM your computer has, the quicker it can write and receive more and more information. The hard drive is the component that everyone is probably most familiar with. The hard drive is storage for all of your information. If a drive gets too full, however, your computer will have a hard time writing or retrieving new information, or even booting up as all applications are stored on the hard drive. Going back to the road scenario, I get directions to retrieve something from a storage locker, in this case representing a startup application. I have plenty of back roads to get there quickly, but when I get to the storage locker it is so full I can't find it. Not an ideal scenario, is it? Storage is crucial to monitor and always keep a backup of works in progress and finished work. The hierarchy of memory is as follows. 1000 megabytes equals 1 gigabyte. 1000 gigabytes equals 1 terabyte. Next, the Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW, D-A-W, is the main software you'll be using to record, edit, mix, arrange, and so forth. Each DAW in general will have similar functions or have the ability to upgrade for expanding your palette of tools. First and foremost, DAWs are used to record, playback, and edit audio. Probably just as important, especially in modern music production, is the DAW's MIDI capabilities. We will delve deeper into MIDI in a later lesson. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and is the foundation of electronic music and many modern musical productions in all genres from orchestral film scores to hip-hop, jazz to dubstep. All professional dolls will have some sort of MIDI view with expanded editing, MIDI input, and virtual instruments. Plugins are independent programs that run internally or inside the DAW. They can be made from a third-party company. Plugins are used to add effects to tracks, more processing, using virtual instruments, sequencing, and expanded editing capabilities such as Autotune. Some DAWs will also have the ability to import video over the timeline. This function is used by film scorers, foley artists, sound designers, and audio mixers. DAWs will all have different features unique to that particular piece of software, but the last function I will mention that is common in DAWs is music notation. 
While other programs are designed to function independently for notation and composing sheet music, many DAWs will allow you to view MIDI tracks in notation form for further editing, arranging, and revisions. The next integral piece of equipment in production studios and any means with digital audio is the A to D converter, or analog to digital converter. This takes an analog signal from a microphone or direct input and digitizes the signal so in a way the computers can decode it to reproduce the sound. The converter can stand alone as a single piece of equipment with one purpose but many times will be integrated within gear. All live digital mixing consoles, for example, contain converters and most commonly on the consumer level, converters are coupled with preamps and a USB connection. The latter comprises an elegant and all-inclusive recording solution known as USB interfaces. The interface essentially converts the audio by taking snapshots of the incoming signal, much like pictures are comprised of pixels that make up an image. Converters take these quote-unquote snapshots by two defining methods, measuring bit depth and sample rate. First, bit depth, or bit rate, determines the dynamic range of the audio. The sound's dynamic range factored over time composes the sound's envelope. Thus, the higher the bitrate, the more accurate of a representation of ADSR during the conversion process. Most commonly in audio conversion, you'll see bitrates in 16 or 24 bits or higher, 16-bit being CD quality. This is another algorithmic process. 16-bit audio contains 65,536 dynamic steps and 24-bit audio at 16,777,216 steps. Those aren't numbers to memorize, but it shows how bitrate is exponential. The second determining factor in the conversion process is sample rate. Sample rate executes the process in gathering an accurate representation of the sound's frequency spectrum. It does this by periodically taking samples. Just like its name, the sample rate is in fact the rate in which these samples are taken. The Nyquist theorem in short defines a minimum sample rate for an accurate representation of the frequency spectrum as at least two times the highest frequency being sampled. In music, we look to capture a broad frequency spectrum, and in digital recording, we have the ability to capture our whole hearing spectrum from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. According to the Nyquist theorem, we would need a sample of at least 40k to accurately capture 20k frequencies. This would in theory be able to sample peak-to-peak -peak amplitudes in a single 20k cycle. CD quality audio samples at a rate of 44.1k, despite the Nyquist theorem. This is regarded as the minimum sample rate to accurately sample 20k due to the quantization and time factors. DVD quality audio is 48k. You will also see 96k converters and less commonly 88.2k sample rates. Although the converters are in theory sampling audio beyond our hearing, it gives you the ability to take more samples of those higher frequencies. After being compressed to MP3 CD quality or for streaming, the benefits of these higher sample rates are largely debated. The term outboard gear was originally coined referring to any gear that was utilized outside of the main mixing console. Nowadays, it usually encompasses any gear, usually analog, that is used to process the signal outside of the computer domain. This is also known as out of the box. Likewise, only using your computer's processing is known as in the box. When using dedicated A to D converters, you are not constrained to the preamps built into the interface. You can use higher quality preamps. Preamps amplify the signal coming into your console or computer. This is where gain control or the head amp is set. If the signal is too hot, it will overload the preamp, resulting in unwanted distortion. Other options preamps may include phase flip, low cut filters, and variable impedance. Processing such as compressors, EQs, delays, and reverbs are all commonly used during the mixing stage. Many software manufacturers do quite a good job emulating sought after pieces of equipment. Because of this, anyone can afford to get 
comfortable using high-end vintage compressors such as the UA1176 or Pultec EQs. Some software companies are even beginning to emulate preamps and microphones. This allows you access to high-end gear at a low cost. Summing mixers are used to mix tracks outside of the computer. Whether it is because of some characteristics of a mixer or workflow, some mix engineers like to take the tracks or groups of tracks and balance them outside of the computer domain. The resulting mix can then be captured onto another recording device such as a computer or tape if desired. Patch bays are essential with outboard gear or any situation with complex routing. The I.O. for each piece of gear is connected to a point of the patch bay. In doing so, you can easily connect cables on the front of the patch bay to route your signal through multiple pieces of gear, as opposed to rewiring racks of gear to achieve the same result. Patch bays have three selectable modes for integrating in-depth signal routing. It is usually as simple as flipping a switch on the module to toggle through these modes. The most common and most useful mode would be full normal. In this mode, the signal is continuously passing through until a patch cable breaks that connection. The signal lo no longer passes through until the other end of the cable is patched. The next is half normal. When the patch bay is half normal, it acts similar to when being normal. The difference occurs when the patch cable is fed into the patch bay. Now the cable no longer breaks the signal, but instead splits it. One end of the split is still passing through, while the other end of the split is free to be routed elsewhere. Lastly, we have through mode. You can think of through mode as an extension of whatever input or output is being hardwired to the back. The signal passes through from the patch bay, but isn't routed anywhere until another point on the patch bay is connected. Proper monitoring is crucial in recording studios. Proper studio monitors will have a flat response and not color the sound. Most consumer grade speakers are designed to make everything sound as good as possible. When mixing and editing, however, you need to be able to hone in on problem areas. You want all of the sonics to be exposed. Whether headphones or speakers, quality is utterly important in achieving great productions. When using speakers, Careful consideration should be taken in the room acoustics. Walls and corners act as bass traps. Parallel walls that don't absorb or diffuse that sound can create nodes or standing waves and affect your sound dramatically. Speakers should be away from the walls unless specifically designed to be wall mounted and point toward the mixer's ears. We'll talk more about room acoustics in another lesson. Finally, Monitoring controls, such as the one pictured here, allow the user to toggle between two sets of speakers, listen to reference tracks, switch from stereo to mono, and adjust playback level, all independent from the mixes the musicians are listening to while tracking. Musicians will typically listen to an individualized mix, while tracking is routed through a separate output for the engineer to monitor. MIDI controls can serve a number of different functions. Fundamentally, a MIDI controller is a piece of hardware that sends what's called MIDI messages. Most uses would be a MIDI keyboard, allowing you to trigger and control a variety of software instruments. The second most common use would be on a mixing surface, allowing the user to write automation data. These controllers use USB connections as a simple computer interface. MIDI modules and other MIDI devices communicate through a 5-pin MIDI cable. The mixer is of course what you picture first when thinking of a recording studio. It is the main tool used in comp compiling all of your tracks and hard work into a coherent mix. With computers, you could get away with mouse clicking a mix, but there are certainly advantages in utilizing a mixer and further, certain advantages in using digital versus analog mixers versus hybrid mixers. MIDI controlled mixers are in a category of their own. They write in automation in your DAW, such as volume moves, pan, effect changes, and any other parameter you can think of. In this case, you can continuously call up sessions from any computer and have the same results. Mixers such as this not only come as a piece of hardware, but also controllable apps for your tablet. With analog desks, 
all of your audio is run through the console out of the box in order to access the desk's functionality such as busing, EQ, pan, and volume. Full digital consoles function similarly to an analog desk, but they have more internal processing such as EQ, compression, effects, internal busing, and so forth. They also take up a smaller footprint by utilizing layered faders. Hybrid consoles are a combination of the two, so you get best of both worlds. Usually a set of analog preamps, EQs, and some dynamics with built-in MIDI control for your DAW and internal routing over integrated circuits. While we went over most of the necessary equipment used in recording and production studios, there are plenty of other items such as cables, microphone stands, headphones, headphone boxes, that either go unspoken or we will integrate further down the line. What was outlined in this chapter are necessary pieces of equipment to have a firm foundation in music production, all with the exception of one last piece, microphones. I am leaving this for last as they directly capture your sound source and there is quite a bit to discuss. In fact, the next two chapters are dedicated solely to microphones and microphone technique. After the instrument and the player, your microphone is the first in your signal chain. While your chain is only as strong as your weakest link, the proper microphone selection along with its placement is the first steps in properly capturing a performance.